Hello, in this video I wanted to take a look at making a really, really um, basic API server with Express, a common framework for Node.js. Um, as we see here on the project's website, Express is often used for building web uh, servers, but we can also use it as a sort of application server, uh, serving things that depend on logic, not just static files. We can serve static files and we might look at that in a subsequent video. Uh, but today what we're going to do is use it to um, model a small key value store database. Um, so we're going to have URLs that allow us to set a key in the database, get the value of a key in the database and get some basic information about it. Um, so we're going to do all of that with Express and Node.js. So let's just dive straight in there. So here I've got a freshly made new folder, there's nothing in here. Um, we want to build a Node.js application, so we're going to do npm init to start configuring one. We'll call it that, we'll give it that version number, that's fine, we don't want a description. Um, we're building something that's a server, so rather than index.js, let's call the file server.js. Seems to make more sense. Don't worry about testing or git or keywords, and I write this. And we'll license it that way. So we'll say, yes, that's fine. So that went ahead and created a file called package.json that has basically got just the things that we just typed into there. So basic node setup, we don't have any code yet. It's not gonna do anything. So let's create that server.js file, which will be empty. So it still won't do anything. And we said we wanted to use Express. So the way we use dependencies in the Node NPM ecosystem is we NPM install them. So we want to NPM install Express. It's going to go get Express and everything that Express in turn depends on. So we can see there it installed 50 different packages to install everything that Express needs to run. And I now have this node modules here. That's a folder that contains all of the packages that were downloaded. So mostly JavaScript files, but it could contain native code depending on what the packages do. Uh, we have package lock, which is tracking the versions of those sub dependencies. We still have our package JSON file. And if we look at that, what's in here now, we have this extra dependency on Express and it's tracking the version number. So we're saying at least 4.17.1, which is the current one. Um, it's actually the only dependency we're going to need for this really simple project. Um, but I'm going to add one more thing. So when I'm building node servers, I kind of like to leave the code running all the time, make changes to it. Now I don't want to go back and control C and restart that server. Um, I like to have that done for me. And there's something called Nodemon that does that. So we're going to install that. And I'm going to use the save dev flag here, which means I want it as a development dependency. So not something that we would use on a production server but something that we need in development. So it's gonna get stored in a different part of the package.json file um, and it's called node-mon. So let's install node-mon and have a sip of tea while we're doing that. Okay, so we've got node-mon installed. If we have a look at package.json again, you'll see I now have this new dev dependency section that just has node-mon in it. Um, so we haven't got any more new files. We've got node modules, package lock, package, and server. Let's open up VS Code and start doing some editing. So first thing I want to do is um, go up here and look at um, my package.json. And in here, I want to make some changes in the script. So we'll get rid of the test script. We're not going to use it anyway. And I'll add a script called dev uh, that I'm gonna to use to start the server in what we'll call development mode. And what I want that to do is uh, run nodemon. So I don't know this, I'm literally copying this from another screen that you can't see, so don't worry that I have this memorized. I don't. There you go. So we're gonna run nodemon whenever we run the uh, dev script. And what that's going to do is it's going to watch for JavaScript files in the project that change. Whenever one of them changes, it'll restart the process for us. So we don't have to. Um, and our only file is going to be this server.js file. So we can um, 
start her up like this npm run dev okay so now it's starting and nothing's happened you see here nodemon clean exit waiting for changes before restart so whenever we change server.js nodemon is gonna rerun the server for us and that'll be handy as we start to add functionality to make the test and debug cycle a bit faster so server.js, we want to use express. So the first thing we do is require it. So conf express equals require express. There we go. And we also then need to create an express application. So we'll call that app. And we do that like this with a sort of constructor thing. And um, that application is going to be a server um, and servers run or HTTP servers run on ports so we need to give it a port number so we'll create a constant called port and we'll use either allow the user to set that through an environment variable called port and if they haven't set that we'll drop back to a default of port 3000 uh, so it's just some stuff that we need to get us going so servers need to listen for uh, for requests on a port so we can now do app which is our server dot listen on the port so 3000 or whatever the user says and then once it's up and running we have a function that's going to run and we'll say console.log oops console.log server listening on port There we go. So when I save that, what we should see over here in Nodemon is that the server restarted because it found, it cha found a change and it's now listening on 3000. So great, we have a server listening on 3000. So what happens if we go to port 3000? So let's do localhost 3000. Um, well, nothing, we get an error. Uh, we can't get slash. Why can we not get slash? Because we just told the port to listen here. We didn't tell it what URLs it should be uh, paying attention to, just port 3000. And we didn't tell it what to do if anything happens. So we need to write a sort of route handling function for the slash URL, so for home. So the way we do that in Express is we do app dot and then the HTTP verb we want. So in this case, we want get because it's going to be a get request. We're just going to request something from the server, get a response. And then we need to give it a path. So we'll say slash, and then we need to give it a function that takes these couple of arguments. And those arguments are request and response, which are gonna be the HTTP request that the server receives. So there'll be an object that has properties about the request, like its URL and um, maybe the user agent of the browser that requested it and some other stuff. And then the response is the object that we need to populate to send back to the, the browser or the client or whatever called us. So in this case, what we want to do is let's have our homepage send back some basic information about this server. So we'll send it back as a JSON document because it's an API server. So it should send things back in JSON format that other machines can understand and parse. So we'll do res dot json which is going to send back a json object and then we can just literally put an object in here and it'll get converted to json and sent out when uh, when the request is responded to so what do we want to put in here let's put in um, a couple of things about the server we'll put in the application name and use a couple of preset environment variables here so this will map to whatever we set the package name to in uh, package.json and we'll then do app version and we'll say that is process.env.npm I think it's package version um, again I've got cheat code off the screen here I don't know this stuff off the top of my head and you shouldn't be expected to this is what Google's for so we're going to say we're going to respond to slash with that object. So when I save, I hey, my server's restarted again. So now when I reload this, there we go. We now get that JSON object that contains these two things and the values uh, of whatever those 
environment variables were set to inside the environment that we're running in, which is this node process over here. So in this much code, we've set up basically a web server that listens on one URL and it does one thing, it just returns this, this document. That's okay, but it doesn't do a heck of a lot. It would be useful if we could actually do something because we said we'd build an API server and we were gonna model a database. So the sort of database I wanna model is a key value store. So uh, instead of having tables and rows, we're gonna have keys and the keys have values. So we will have uh, a few routes on the server. We'll need a way to set a key to a given value. We'll need a way to get a keys value. And we'll add a route that gets information about the state of the database. So if we do app.get because we're going to fetch something back and we do get slash and now we want a key name. So the key name might be anything. It might be foo, bar, favorite color, dog name, whatever. Um, so we don't know what's going to be in the next part of this URL, but express helps us out here because we can use this colon notation and that'll create a uh, request parameter that we can query the value of at runtime so in our function that's going to respond to this this path so we'll say anything that looks like get and then something uh, we will run this function for and again we have request response Boom. there we go and um, for now we'll just do res.json and send back to the true so we'll send back a really basic json object if I save this, server's restarted again in the background there. So in addition to our slash route, we should now have, so if I do slash get slash Fred, we respond with this to do true. If I do slash get slash favorite color, we also respond with true. So it's mapping URLs that look like this to this function here, but we're not really doing much with that just yet um, and anyway we don't actually have a database yet so there's nothing to get so we'll deal with that in a minute so the other thing that we might want to do is we said we wanted something that had information about the database so app.get uh, let's call it db info and again we want a request response uh, oops and Again, we'll just say res.json to do true for now. So we've got another route called dbinfo. We can expect that when we go to dbinfo, we receive the same output as we would when we go to get because we've set them both to be the same thing for now. Um, okay, so we can actually implement a tiny little bit of our database now. So the good thing about a key value store is it's very easy to implement a naive key value store in JavaScript because it looks roughly like this, a JavaScript object. So we'll say when our server boots up, we'll have something called DB or database. That's going to be an empty object. It's uh, not going to have any keys or values in it. And then when we call this method, we want to get one of those keys back. And when we call this method, Let's say we want to get uh, how many keys exist in the database. So that should be fairly straightforward to do now. So we can basically do, um, let's create an object called info and we'll create a property on that object and we'll call it size and we'll get the number of, number of keys in the database, object dot keys how many keys does this object have length will tell us that so size that's we'll call it db key count that's kind of a better name isn't it that'll tell us how many uh keys are in the database and then rather than send this back let's send back that info object and we've now got the beginnings of a db info route. So if I refresh this now, we should have, there we go. There's no keys in the database. Um, why are there no keys in the database? Because we haven't written anything that would allow us to put any keys in the database yet. In order to do that, 
we need to look at something slightly different. So, so far we've done like three GET routes, uh, which respond, or well, we send a request in, a GET request on these URLs, and it responds with something that it's, it's made from the server. So what we want now is something that allows us to send in some data and change the state of something on the server. So we want to be able to add a key to the database. So let's do a post request this time. So if you're familiar with the way that web forms work, they usually post um, and they have a post body and that body is like a URL encoded HTTP form or something like that. We're going to do a JSON body post and we're going to say, Put that at the URL set. And we're going to do request response there. And we are going to need to get values from the request body. So I'll have to look at how that works. Um, but we can create a route called set, and we can, same thing, it has a uh, handler function that takes the request and the response. This one's going to listen on the post verb though. So we're not going to be able to test this in the browser. We'll need to test it with something else. So I'll use the uh, postman tool for that. Um, and we'll see how that works in a moment. But for now, let's just save that and go back to our get route and just see if we can finish this off, even though it's not going to do anything much at the moment because we can't set anything. So here we've got this colon key. So we need the value of that because that's going to be the key that we want to set in our object and return back. So it's the key, sorry, that we want to get from our database and return back. So in order to get the value of that, we have to know where it lives. So this request object here has something called params, so request parameters. So this is rec.params.key will contain whatever that part of the URL is. So from here, what we'll do is um, we will say that we want to get uh, whatever's in the database at that key, and we want to send it back. So instead of just having it here as a variable, let's put it here in what we send back. And keys have values, so we'll say value and then whatever's there. So what we're now saying is whenever we get a request, a get request for get slash Fred or fish or favorite color or whatever it is, we'll do a database lookup. So we'll get that value from the request object. So key will become Fred or fish or whatever we put in and we'll see what the uh, property of the database object is or what is stored at that key in the database object and we'll send that back. So let's save that, server restarts. So given that we have a database with nothing in it and we've no way of putting anything in there yet, you would expect that get slash Fred would return nothing. So it seems to be working. Um, so now we need to tackle this how do we uh, how do we actually set something? Um, so this is a post request, um, and a post request is going to have a request body, um, and we want to send in a request body that's in JSON, and we want to be able to access it in the code here. So we would, in order to do that, um, use request dot body dot value so what's in the request body and we want to set uh, request dot body dot key to request dot body dot value so we're going to imagine a request body that's a JSON object that has two properties key and value so rec dot body becomes an object in this request object um, and it then in turn has key and value because it'll have the keys of whatever we send in to this URL. So we'll see how that works in a second. Um, what we then want to do is set the database's key to that value and then acknowledge back to the user that we've done that. So we're going to say response dot, this time we're going to do something different. We're going to use status and send an HTTP status. Uh, there's like an implied 200 status in everything we've done so far, so okay. We're going to say 201 for we created something. 
And we're still going to send some JSON back as well. So we can set the status and send some JSON back. So here's the JSON we want to send back. We want to send back status, let's say created. Um, or actually, no. Let's say OK here. Uh, the reason why I'm saying OK here is because this will end up being used for both uh, sets that create a new key in the database and sets that change the value of an existing one. So we're kind of bending API semantics a little bit and bending HTTP response codes, but this is a simple database. So we'll always use 201 created, whatever happens, and we'll just, we'll just say, okay. So this is all well and good. Um, and there's one sort of extra subtlety that we need to do here to make this work. So Express by default is a minimalist framework. It doesn't configure anything or well, it doesn't assume anything more than uh, it really needs until we tell it to. So one of the things that we need to configure is we need to tell it to watch out for request bodies that are in the JSON format and pass them into an object in the request object. If we don't do that, we're gonna get nothing when we post things in and we'll be wondering where our request bodies have gone to. So up here somewhere, we're gonna say app.use, which is how we add behavior to express. Um, express.json, which is Express's JSON uh, body formatting middleware. So we'll save that, tell Express to use that. So what happens is by the time a post request with a JSON body on this URL gets to this function here, this object will have a body and it'll be a JavaScript object. And if we post in a body with keys called key and value, then we can expect this code to work. If we post in a body that has something else, the not key and not value, uh, this isn't going to work and we might want to send back an error. And in a future video, we'll look at how you can do that with uh, request validation. So we don't have to alter our code here that does things. We just put some more code in front of it that says, hey, check the parameters first and just reject this if, if they're wrong. But that's for another time. So we've now got a post route. Can't run that in the browser easily. So I'm gonna run it in Postman here. So we need a post, we need local host uh, 3000 slash set. And we need to set the body for that post. And the body for that post, we are gonna set as JSON. And we are gonna set key, favorite color to value red. So let's assume that somebody's favorite color is red. We are gonna send that in and we get back our status okay and we get back our 201 created. So we can now expect that the database contains one uh, key called favorite color. And we can go ahead and check that. So if we do a get request to HTTP lo oops, local host, 3000 slash get slash favorite color. And these are gonna be uh, case sensitive because strings. There we go. So we get value red. So our route for setting and getting things is working. Um, let's set something else. So let's set a uh, favorite dog to, I am quite a fan of the Springer, Span oops, Springer Spaniel. So let's set that and let's now do something different again. So we can do uh, localhost 3000 db info. See what that tells us these days. So it tells us we have two keys in the database. Um, so we have a favorite color and spring of spaniel. But it might be useful to know what the keys in the database are as well. So what I'm gonna do now is enhance this route to have another way of calling it. So we're gonna add something so that we can do um, something like this. We can do, let's see, details equals true. Um, and right now this is not gonna do anything because we haven't written the extra code for it. So we're gonna get the same response back. But what I wanna happen here is when I do details equals true, I would like the uh, response here to include an, an extra key that lists out all of the keys that the database knows about. Um, okay, so what we're gonna have to do to achieve that is 
modify our DB info route here. So at the minute it just returns this. And what we're gonna do is say if request.query, which is another um, object on the request object. So remember we put this here as a question mark thing in the URL, so that's what's called a query parameter. So a request parameter will be like this bit, the DB info query parameter is here. So we call the query parameter details. Dot details. Um, and we're gonna say if that is set to true, and we'll do it this way around because it might not exist, and that just makes the code a little simpler. So if request.query.details is set to true, then we want set info dot keys. Yeah, let's call it that. Um, to object dot keys db. So we're gonna say, hey, get us all of the keys that are in the database and put it in the keys thing. Now, we're already doing this once here. Um, oh look, Mr. Sammy Carl. We're already doing this once here, so let's tidy that up a little bit and do const db keys, oops, keys equals object dot keys db. So we'll get the keys there and then we'll use that. And then we don't have to run object.keys again and we save ourselves a little bit of time. So instead of dbkeys.length, we'll just send back dbkeys, which should be an array of all the keys in the database. So let's save this. Server's restarted. So what can we expect to happen when we run this now? Ah, we have an empty database. Uh, but we do have our keys array and it's empty. So we have an empty database because the server restarted and the database is just a global variable. There's no persistence whatsoever. So we need to populate it again. So let's do some sets here. So let's put favorite dog back to Springer Spaniel. And this time let's do favorite cat. And let's do the, let's say tabby cat. Oops, tabby cat, tabby cat. So set that. And we can check we've got some of those. So favorite color doesn't exist anymore. Favorite dog. Spring Spaniel. Favorite cat. Ooh, cat. Tabby cat. And detail uh, info without the details should just tell us we have two keys. Info with the details. We have two keys and it tells us what the keys are. So we now have a really basic way of listing all the keys in our database. Uh, retrieving their values and updating them. So if I, for example, change my mind and I'm, maybe we like the Cocker Spaniel more than the Springer Spaniel all of a sudden, I can do that. Then if I do this, we can expect that we'll now get Cocker Spaniel, not Springer Spaniel, but that this has remained unchanged because we didn't add any more keys. So that's a really, really simple, hopefully, um, basic introduction to um, Express. So we built a very, very simple database based around a JavaScript object. Um, we learned that Express supports request parameters that allow us to match and pull things out of URLs um, so we can use those values. So here we were using that as a lookup in our database and um, we learn that we can also use query parameters. So the things that come after the question mark in the URL. And then when we wanted to do a post to set something, um, we have the access to the request body. And in the case where the request body was JSON, and you know, in our case, that's what we wanted to do. We had to add a JSON body parser to Express so that it could take those values that are coming in on the request and make them easier to work with by turning them into that rec.body object. So Express has other parsers for other things like form data. Um, doesn't load them all by default because it doesn't know what you want to use and it aims to be fast. So minimum logic, just load what you need when you need it. Uh, that's hopefully been a useful introduction. Um, this is something that I do all the time when building simple projects to demonstrate APIs and other things. Uh, something I have no muscle memory for. Um, I'm 
able to type all of this out and look like I know what I'm doing because I'm looking at code on another monitor that you don't see. So don't think you have to memorize any of this stuff, but it's useful boilerplate stuff that will get you up and running with the project really quickly. Um, I've left a copy of this on GitHub for you to play with. And in a future video, I'll aim to enhance this so that we, for example, start to validate some of these uh, parameters that we're reading here to make sure that they exist and that they're the right type and that we start to do something else like maybe add some logging capability so we have some routes that are protected or we decide that our server needs to serve an html front end so we want some routes that just serve static assets like javascript and css and so on and we don't need logic for um, so we'll look at that in future videos but for the meantime that's been it hopefully you've enjoyed that and um, feel free to let me know if uh, you have any questions thanks bye